All right, so we're going to talk about balance B next. What we'll do is review the rules just to get us back into judging a balance beam at the collegiate level. So as we learned last time um, and reminded ourselves is that the special requirements are just worth two tenths and there are five of them on beam. The ACRO series is one uh, of those special requirements. The difference is that it cannot be connected to a dismount. They want this to stop on the beam. And then special requirements for a dance series, but they can also have a dance or a dance acro series. This dance element must be a C. And once again, there's a special rule about dismounts. That series cannot be connected to the dismount. The needle leap or a jump with 180 split. It can be part of the dance series. They need a full turn from group three. They need a C dismount or a B dismount preceded by and directly connected to any D acro. The typical one we see is aerial cartwheel to full. In composition, uh, the, for variety, uh, it's a back acro. If that's missing, it's a flat one tenth. If they're missing a forward or a sideward, it's a flat one tenth. And that needs to be from the groups one, six, seven, or eight. And just note that group nine dismounts are not included. And the reason I think it's important to note that is because we, you know, a DP will take a half a tenth deduction if the only one they have is in the dismount. And you might catch yourself thinking about that when you see it happening at a collegiate meet. And group nine dismounts is not included. So they have to have their forward, sideward, or back acro has to be from the other groups. Distribution is a possibility. It's a 0.05 flat deduction. The use of the entire beam that includes level and space, those are half tenth flat deduction each. And the one that I'm going to spend just a second on, you'll be surprised at, is the front, back, and side choreography. And that's a half a tenth flat if they don't have those three. And the reason I'm going to spend time on that is because there was actually a proposal that was being considered this year by the college coaches that did not get um, approved. They voted on it and did not vote on it this year. But it was to have us flash our choreography deductions, and just like we do UTL. And so I think the reason that it occurred is because there were some instances in which the coaches felt that the gymnast had the front side back choreography, but they were taking that deduction and they don't know that unless they either inquire or put in a routine summary form at the end. And they really want that transparency. That's really important. So we want to just review this to make sure that everybody's viewing it the same way. This is one of those things when I called Connie and a few other people and Linda and others and said, so exactly what <laughs> what counts? Do they have to turn all the way to the side? Because we have heard in our clinics, we get a little bit different interpretation. So here's what we've come up with, that it's not just a static pose. Uh, there needs to be some movement sidewards with choreography. And my specific question was, do they have to turn their feet and all of their body to the side? Because I had actually heard that in one clinic. And the answer to that is a little different than what I just said, but so we're going to look at some. So assuming that this is the only side that they had, would any of these count as a side choreography? And the answer is no, because they need to have more than a head turn. And I realize you can't really tell what they did before or after this because they're still shots, but kind of bear with me to make the point. Would these count? There's a little bit more sideward movement there. And the answer was no, they need to have more than just their head and shoulder moving. How about these? And these we pretty much got the okay on, assuming that there was additional choreography leading into those, that there was movement as well. It wasn't just a static pose. Their head, upper body, and hip twist to the side is okay. And these are very clear examples. And if all the routines had these clear cut examples, we wouldn't have had to have this conversation. But they don't, and that for various reasons. And so we need to be prepared and apply that deduction consistently and fairly across the board. Okay, up to the level is another composition area, and uh, it's a flat one tenth. And actually, up to the level is pretty easy on beam. It's everything else later that I'm going to talk about that gets confusing on beam. But basically, they need to have a flight series. Uh, with CV. If they don't have CV, then they need to have another D or an E acro or an E dance. However, if that D or E acro is directly connected to the dismount, it doesn't fulfill the up to the level. Okay, so does this routine I'm getting ready to switch over to here meet the up to the level requirement? 
And this, this is not the full routine. This is just her acro series and dismount. And then you just need to assume that there's no e dance routine because we're not going to show the whole thing. Okay, so she did her acro series and fell, and then she did her dismount. And so her flight series did not have CV. She has to do an additional DE. What if she fell on that? Well, even if she falls, uh, if the, in the CV was not awarded, if she had that, then the UTL is not applied. And then she does have a D skill in her dismount. Does that count for the UTL? No, it did count for her additional D, but it does not count uh, because it is part of the dismount, because a D or an acro direct, directly connected to a dismount can't fulfill the UTL. Then there's some element value differences, which just be sure you review those before you go in to, to judge. The ones that I thought you might need to know tonight now is number 2202, the straddle or pike split jump uh, performed with a quarter turn is a C regardless in college, and so that's different than what we have in the age group program. And then the salto backward stretch with step out is a D, but considered a C for CV purposes. And I can't actually remember if you need this one, but I put a red arrow by it anyhow. And that is the uh, swing free leg backward to a front salto stretch with a full twist. Okay, and that would be a C. CV bonus is a little bit different. They do not get CV if they have a B dismount. And that means the element that is the last element performed and lands on the ground can't be a B to get that CV bonus. It has to be at least a C. They don't get a CV for a two-flight acro series if it's a BC salto. The layout step outs and the aerial walkovers receive D bonus for difficulty value, but they're considered a C for connective value. But that's only in the back handspring series, and that's in all variations of the back handsprings. And then the three flight acro series, excluding dismount connections, if they've got at least one C, then they get a one tenth of CV. And a BC dismount, this is the one that caught us for a while, but I think we're catching on now, gets a one tenth CV. And a C dance and a C dismount, which we don't see all that often, but occasionally is a one tenth CV as well. Now, there's a, several examples in the rules modifications. And what I have done just to make my life easier is I made a little chart for myself. I just write down what D that they're going to get. So here, in the round off layout, step out, she's going to get one D, but no CV. And if she's trying to do a layout, but she take, she pikes it down, she gets a D and one CV. And then the back handspring, back handspring, back layout, step out, gets one D, one CV, plus one for that extra one tenth. That's a chart that I really found just helps me because in the spur of the moment, if I need to check something really quickly, then I can go look at my own chart. As I noted, there are several applications that, in which dismounts are treated differently. So I thought it'd be good just to have one slide in which we kind of review all the different things about dismounts. So a D plus a B element is okay to fulfill the special requirements. So that's okay. It's not okay for CV to have a B dismount. You never get the CV if you've got the B element that is the element landing on the ground. A D directly connected to the dismount is not okay for the additional D that they need for UTL, if they were to need that. And then the dismount with three aqua flight elements is not eligible for the one-tenth additional CV, and that's because it does not land on the beam. And so that's what they're recognizing is those series that stay land on the beam as opposed to the dismount, which lands, of course, on the floor. The BC dismount receives one-tenth bonus, and the CC dismount receives one-tenth bonus. So if that's something that might help you, take a little screenshot of that, and kind of keep that with you next to your other rules. On this one, I'd just like you to uh, notate your deductions, and then we're going to stop and talk about it, but we aren't going to calculate start value and score on this routine.
Okay, so the purpose in showing this was not to uh, have you calculate a score, but to get your execution detections down, including, including any concentration pauses. So we're at the concentration pause, and we put a timer on these. So she was not two seconds, so that would be a zero deduction. And she's at the 2.3 seconds, which puts her in the one tenth deduction. So please go ahead and score this routine. I'll give you a little bit of time to get your score. So what we had for this was a 9.9 start value and a 9.65 score. And it has been mentioned, 12, 13 different people judged this. And we did select the score that was seemed to be the most frequent. In terms of her value part, she's OK. She has an acro series with bonus connection, a DC for an aerial to a back tuck, plus two. She has slight balance error there. She had her CB dance combination with plus one. She's got her full turn and she has an additional D, which she didn't need because she already had filled her UTL credit. But that BDB dismount, it's our BDB series is part of the dismount. So it, it uh, does not get any bonus. I'm trying a new thing this year in terms of marking uh, direction for choreography. I'd been doing something else and so what I'm going to try to do this year is I'm going to that's going to be my forward and the half arrow is going to be forward choreography and then I'm going to have the backward choreography and then if it's sideways it's going to go upward. We'll see how that works out. Uh, but that's that's my plan. So other than the balance error, we did have a concentration pause and then a tenth for the hop. Uh, and that was a nine six five gymnast number seven. So for this gymnast, we had a 10-0 start value and a 9.75 score. She had all of her value parts, all of her special requirements. Uh, she has a DA mixed series with a plus one. 
And then she did have the BD. And so that D from the mix series, the front aerial, helps her with her UTL. She has uh, a CC. Remember that straddle quarter in order to be a C for college? It's a C regardless of which direction we can see that straddle or not. So she gets a CC plus two. And then uh, BC dismount. This was a good example of the kind of a dismount that would get a one tenth additional bonus for that combination. So she's got four tenths in CV and two tenths in D. And then everything else is execution. She had some bent legs in her aerial, front aerial. Uh, she is a little flat on her full turn and you might have had a footwork deduction there or not being on her uh, up on toe enough. I, I, I did not take that. She has a feet deduction in her gymnastic series, a little bit of amplitude on the second element. Actually, when I went back and looked at it, it was actually in slow motion. It's 180 degrees. She just really didn't com totally complete it. She finishes a little bit off the beam and then a hop on her dismount. So that is the 975. So go ahead and judge this one, please. Okay, so for this gymnast, we had a 10-0 start value and a 9-3 routine score. As I was watching it just now, and I noticed I didn't take any concentration pauses, and I maybe should have, so if you thought that, you might have a little lower score. She has a three acro series with the back handspring layout, step out, layout, step out. She gets D bonus for difficulty one time. She doesn't get it the second time. However, she does get two tenths for that connection series, and then she also gets an additional one tenth in connection bonus for having a three acro series. She has her gym series, CB plus one. She's got her full turn. She's good on that. And she's got her BC dismount plus one. We took uh, execution, as you see, uh, half for bent knees and all each one of the acro skills. So half, half, half. And half for her arms and alignment and the hop on the dismount. Likewise, you might have considered a footwork deduction for her. I did not, but uh, it certainly crossed my mind. So with this gymnast, she has a 10-0 start value and a 9-9 score. She has all of her special requirements and all of her elements that she needs and value parts. 
She has a three acro series, front aerial, back handspring, back layout, step out. So she gets two tenths D bonus and two tenths for the acro series and one tenth additional. A uh, little half a tenth to bent knees deduction on the, one of the acro skills. Then she has a switch to split jump, CB plus one. So she fills that requirement. And then she has a BD. B, dismount, the, she doesn't get an additional D for that uh, D because she's already gotten it once, and it would not have fulfilled her UTL if she needed it, but she does. She's already fine with that, and it also would not get the bonus for the three acro, but again, she's just fine. She landed with a little bit of a staggered feet. She has a beautiful 180 split in the air on both of those skills and has some very nice extension.